Hi, it's Mr. G here, and today we're going over 1.4, How to Organize Economies, an Overview of Economic Systems. So if we're looking at economies, we have different kind of economies that we can basically look at. So we're going to look at the idea of traditional command economy and market economy. We will look at as well as mixed economy, which is then just a combination of these. Uh, but let's first look at traditional economy. So what does traditional economy mean? So a traditional economy, and if you're thinking about this, think about some more nomadic kind of tribe. Um, they're basically just kind of wandering around, um, you know, they're only concerned with the basic, you know, things they need to survive. Um, there could be, or a small little, you know, community, they're doing a little bit of farming or they're going out hunting to get the things that they need to uh, basically survive with. And so this is a very traditional type of economy. Um, the occupations often stay in the family. It's the family that teaches you, the, you know, the parents teach the children then, um, you know, how to hunt, how to fish, how to survive, etc. cetera. Um, there can be a bit of bartering between people, but ultimately there's not a lot of trading. So people are more concerned for themselves. You know, if you ever watched any of those kind of um, movies, those post-apocalyptic movies, they're all, what do you see them doing? You know, people with all these specialties and all these things, well, they're going out and getting food. They're doing all these kinds of things, the basic things to survive. And that's a very traditional economy. Um, you know, and you'll see it in some very remote places, places Africa, South America. Um, it can be a part in some kind of, uh, in some economies in terms of a mixed economy, uh, but otherwise we don't see a lot of that anymore. The next one is a command economy. Now, command economy works with the idea that you have a central authority, a government that's in charge, and the government decides what are we producing, how is it to be produced, and for whom is things being produced for? And so those are the ba basic questions. And so any economic system has to answer that. But with the command economy, it's basically the government. You know, they have their officials and they're like, well, we're going to produce this many cars. We're going to produce uh, this much soap. And these many people, they get the soap. And once it's done, it's done, etc. And so there isn't a lot of choice with it. Often command economies, you know, you're given or you put in a requisition for what you want or However, it might work or you get your, you know, package of basic essentials every month and, you know, get that choice. You're not like going to a supermarket and it's like, well, I like this type of soap versus this soap. No, you're given this soap, which is the government made soap. And so that's essentially how a command economy works. Uh, countries in the world that use this is like Cuba, North Korea, etc. The government's in charge. They decide uh, what's being done. Uh, the last one here is a market economy. Now, a market economy uh, is basically decentralized. The government doesn't control. They don't say what is actually um, going to be produced. They don't say that, you know, um, that store over there is going to provide you with these goods. No. The person who opens the store, they come up with the goods they want to sell, and they sell them. Uh, so the government really doesn't have as much control. They put certain regulations in place, but they don't have control over the basic questions of what is being produced, how is it being produced, and for whom it's being produced. They're like, to the market, you figure out what people want, and you get that done. And so an income is based on a value for society. So if you come up with something that society really values, you get a higher income. If you provide something that society doesn't value as much, you get, you know, not as much of an income, et cetera. Um, it tends to be a very wasteful kind of uh, system because think about what happens. Well, if I decide that I'm going to make the Mr. G bobblehead, and I make a million of them, and no one buys any of them, you know, because no one wants it. Well, suddenly, so I thought, well, there's going to be a demand out there for it, but there turns out there is no demand for it, and I have to, like, throw it all out, um, you know, before I learn my lesson. And so a lot more waste, and we have that a lot, you know, in um, basically a lot of countries nowadays where things are just thrown out, thrown out, etc. So you have a lot more waste in a market economy. Uh, market forces determine production. Okay, so um, now we have, as I said, with COVID-19, and there's more huge demand, say, for masks. So there's a huge demand. So, of course, what's happening is that, um, you know, basically more um, companies are going to be looking at, okay, I'm going to try and produce this. 
Now, a mixed economy is a combination of all the above, as well as it can have an underground economy, which we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, mixed economy basically looks at uh, all of those uh, things it has, uh, and you're like, well, how can all of those things happen? Well, in Canada, for example, um, we have portions of a command economy because education and health care are mandated by the government. So essentially, it's the government control. They determine what hospitals are there, what health care you get, uh, everything else. So that is an aspect of the command economy. However, we also have market economy where you can go to stores and you know the government has no control over essentially what's sold in that way. Uh, you could have elements of traditional economy, you know, where people are, you know, still um, learning from their parents. Maybe they're doing certain jobs, bartering, etc. Uh, and you also, of course, have an underground economy. And that's the next one. Underground economy are where transactions uh, without government approval are occurring. So when someone is, you know, basically, I know, especially in command economies where you're limited goods, it's like, oh, here, you know, do you want this other product that you can't get anywhere else, you know, and then they work out a deal, etc. And so that's the underground economy. And so these different economies uh, essentially are ways of, you know, defining and looking at economic systems. Okay. So the next topic we're going to look at is globalization. Now, globalization is looking on a global scale um, how the connection culturally, politically, economically between people. Um, you know, we have you know our trade uh, between different countries. We're so self -re or we're so reliant on other countries to provide us with certain things. Uh, where, you know, political things can have a huge impact on, you know, as we know with trade wars, etc. Um, it can have a huge impact on, you know, globalization. Um, and, you know, and we look at that from economic perspectives, and we won't go into those kind of discussions right now. Um, but we look at things like imports and exports, um, how much are you importing from other countries, how much you're exporting. You probably hear about this on the news all the time and how much trade essentially is occurring. And we'll kind of these are topics. These are macroeconomic topics, you know, that often are looked at. Um, but as I said, you know, that's what globalization is. OK, and that's it for now. Um, our next video will be starting into chapter two.